Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, described the changes made to the Starship's architecture from the previous iteration on Friday. Musk posted on X, the former Twitter platform, saying, version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. He was answering a user who was looking for information about the next iteration of the launch vehicle. In another report, Musk added that Starship is designed to accommodate tens of thousands of passengers on each journey. Thus, it must consistently be incredibly dependable. It will be, Musk wrote. Musk clarified that having many engines boosts reliability in the event of an isolated engine failure. Musk continued, Starship is aiming to be reliable with 33 engines on the Super Heavy Booster, which is even more than the 30 engines on Soviet N1 first stage. Musk posted a picture of Starships at Starbase with the phrase, the last of V1, which piqued people's interest in the new version. The Starships 1.0 prototype in 2020. While several Starship prototypes have been built before, the V1 prototype was created especially for an orbit test flight. Musk's plan to land people on the Moon and Mars heavily relies on SpaceX's Starship. The Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket, developed by SpaceX, are a fully reusable transportation system that can transport people and goods to Mars, the Moon, and Earth orbit. With a maximum payload capacity of 250 metric tons and 150 metric tons entirely reusable, Starship is the most formidable launch vehicle ever created. Starship is the second stage of the Starship system and a fully reusable spacecraft. The vehicle can deliver crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It has an integrated payload section and is available in multiple configurations. Point-to-point -point transportation on Earth is another feature of Starship that allows for one hour or less transit to any location on the globe. Super Heavy is the Starship launch system's initial stage, or booster. Super Heavy is entirely reusable and will re-enter Earth's atmosphere to land back at the launch site. It is propelled by 33 Raptor engines that run on subcooled liquid methane, CH4, and liquid oxygen, LOX. With double the thrust of the Falcon 9 Merlin engine, the Raptor engine is a reusable staged combustion engine powered by methane and oxygen. It powers the Starship system. Six engines, three Raptor and three Raptor vacuum, RVAC, engines will power the Starship. RVAC engines are made to operate in space vacuums. 33 Raptor engines, 13 in the middle, and the rest 20 encircling the booster's rear end will power Super Heavy. On November 18, the Starship launched for a second time and managed to cross stage separation. But not long after, the booster exploded, and the spacecraft, having ascended to almost 150 kilometers in height, lost communication with SpaceX. With a splash down in the Pacific Ocean, the test launch ultimately fell short of its ultimate objective, a round-trip ride into space. Even though this and previous prototypes have crashed and exploded, Starship is ready to take the world by surprise when it launches into orbit. For the Artemis mission, NASA has chosen SpaceX to send astronauts to the Moon using Starship. To enable NASA to return to the Moon, the SLS was built. Elon Musk and SpaceX, meanwhile, are working tirelessly to build their own massive Starship rocket, which they hope could eventually carry people to Mars. Then, how are the two similar? NASA achieved a historic feat in 1969 when it launched humans to the moon on Apollo 11. When Artemis III launches the first woman and person of color to the moon in 2025, it intends to accomplish the same. It will use the massive, still under development space launch system, SLS, rocket to do this. SpaceX has similarly ambitious plans. The Starship, a fully reusable rocket that can carry people to the moon, Mars, and other destinations, is being tested by the business. However, SpaceX intends to use the Starship to orbit the Moon with a group of carefully selected guests, including Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mizawa. The launch date of this mission was first stated in 2018, then rescheduled for 2023 and now for a later date. The Starship hasn't yet finished an orbital test flight, though. Meanwhile, after rolling out its huge rocket on Friday, March 18, NASA made history by launching the SLS with a wet dress rehearsal. The SLS and Starship have strikingly comparable functions, despite having different missions. This is especially true when you consider that NASA intends to use the Starship to land astronauts on the Moon. 
In April 2021, SpaceX's Starship HLS was awarded a $2.89 billion NASA contract. Here's how these two rockets stack up as they aim toward the moon. A shared characteristic between the two rockets is that neither has been seen before, not since the powerful Saturn V rocket that made the Apollo missions possible. SLS is a little more complex because different combinations are anticipated. Block 1, the initial iteration, will have a height of 322 feet and a mass of 5.75 million pounds. Block 1 is expected to generate 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at launch, 15% more than Saturn V did. More than 27 metric tons, or 59,500 pounds, can be launched into orbits beyond the Moon using it. SLS can carry more than 46 metric tons, or 101,400 pounds, into deep orbit in its Block 2 configuration, thanks to its 9.5 million pounds of thrust. According to SpaceX, the combined height of the Starship's cargo and rocket stages will be 394 feet, making it taller than the SLS. 17 million pounds of thrust will be available from its Super Heavy booster stage. The orbital capacity data that is made available to the public on the websites of SpaceX and NASA is not directly comparable. For instance, SpaceX claims Starship will be able to launch more than 100 metric tons into low Earth orbit LEO, whereas NASA claims SLS will be able to launch 46 metric tons into deep space. Deep space means everything beyond the Moon, a NASA representative said. They also mentioned that 95 metric tons, or roughly 210,000 pounds, may be sent to LEO using the SLS Block 1 configuration. The fact that Starship is supposed to reach Earth orbit, recharge via another Starship, and then resume its journey, thereby increasing its range and payload capacity, complicates matters. SLS is designed to go directly to its destination. The goals of SLS and Starship are to transport people or goods to Mars, the Moon, and maybe even farther. The forthcoming Artemis moon missions are scheduled to be launched by SLS later this decade, but NASA has chosen SpaceX to use Starship for the lunar descent phase, which will actually transport astronauts to the moon's surface. There are a lot of unknowns and exaggerated estimates surrounding costs. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, believes that Starship will ultimately be significantly less expensive than SLS. Highly confident that Starship launches might be less than $10 million in a few years, he declared during a press event in February. Even when contrasted to the $6-$7 million cost of launching its much smaller Falcon 9 rocket, this would be a relatively inexpensive launch cost. Nonetheless, it remains uncertain if this would be possible. While the White House Office of Management and Budget estimated that the cost of an SLS launch in 2019 would be over $2 billion, NASA has proposed having launch costs. In March of this year, NASA Inspector General Paul Martin stated that the cost of an Artemis mission could reach $4.1 billion, as reported by Oz Technica. The cost of an SLS launch is also unknown. The fact that SpaceX wants Starship to be reusable while the SLS isn't is another factor that affects cost. Sending people to Mars is an intended use for both rockets. NASA intends to design its Mars missions more effectively by applying the lessons learned from the Artemis series of missions. The missions will be carried out using Block 1B and Block 2 configurations. Bringing the first humans to Earth in the 2020s is SpaceX's lofty objective. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel The Untold to see even more of our incredible videos.